I've got 30 all-time NBA legends, each representing a team they played for. Each player occupies a country on this fictional world map. Win a game, take over more land, lose a game, and you're eliminated. It's that simple. Each legend has a supporting cast drafted from a pool of current day NBAers 89 overall or lower. Lower rated legends have slightly more help, higher rated legends have less help. Each time a legend wins a game, they get to steal a supporting cast player from a team they beat. Which dominant legend would have me saying this later in the video? Dread it, fear it, run from it, it don't matter coming to destroy all your dreams. And which underdog legend would leave me genuinely speechless? At zero point in this video did I think that was going to happen even into the final game. Well, there's only one way to find out. And of course, step one, first game of the video, who is going to be our attacking legend? Dr. J is in the house. And which direction will the doc be heading to attack his? I'm vamping. Okay, that is east. And very interesting. He almost missed out on it, but he will face Dirk Nowitzki, that little, uh, little country right there. So cute, Dirk. But can you defend your little cute country? Let's find out. We've got a certified hood classic right out the gates. Dirk, we need some clutch. Oh, Dirk's fading from deep. Oh, that's Dirk. That's Dirk. I ne it was never in doubt. That's Dirk's game. Can Julius Irving answer? He's got it. They're only down three. Oh, he yo, that was Dirk on the steal. Wow, a couple huge plays in the clutch for Dirk. 41 and 11. Yes, sir. And just like that, the first mover and shaker of our video, Dirk Nowitzki moving west to take over some Dr. J spot. And he also makes a move to acquire the best supporting cast weapon from Dr. J. That was 85 overall CJ McCollum. And on to game two we go. Not sure we can do a better matchup, find a better matchup than game one. We got Neek from ATL, baby. Where is he Where is he going? Okay, Southwest. Oh boy, Neek could be in some trouble here. Yeah, Southwest. He's going to the point god, Chris. Chris Paul, baby. I was super excited for our second matchup here. Dominique Wilkins in 95, Chris Paul in 98. Their supporting casts are both strong, but uh, yeah, this game was over pretty quickly. Atlanta, Dominique. Nothing too outlandish, but he did carry 29 and 15. And that's a big move on our map for Dominique. Look at all that space he takes over. Get out of here, CP3. And welcome to the Hawks, Clay Thompson. Game three, let's keep the ball rolling. No real blowout. I mean, that game was a pretty sizable. Oh, Steph Curry. I wouldn't say Dominique blew out Chris Paul, but he did win convincingly. Steph is going west. Wait, no, that's East. I'm an idiot. I don't know directions. Oh, and speaking of point gods, we got an epic battle right here. Steph versus Isaiah Thomas. Perfect. Our point god battle is coming right down to the wire. Let's go. Isaiah in the clutch. What you gonna do? Uh, who is that out there? That's a bad shot. <laughs> he made... Wait, who would... That was Mo Bamba? Come on, man. Steph, I know you're not about to get upstaged by Mo Bamba. There you go. Good cut. Do we have a game winner incoming? Isaiah Thomas shot clock winding down. Pulls up. That's a bad shot. Yep, yeah, I knew he was missing that. I mean, Steph was right there, dude. Why? We're still super tight here in OT. Can Steph or Isaiah Kai? Isaiah bricked another shot. No, wait, don't. That's Mo Bamba again. Mo Bamba is so clutch. Brother, that's a tough L for Steph. He was so freaking good. 39 and 19. Tough way to go out. That was a bit of a surprising result. A chaotic finish that sees Isaiah Thomas claim Steph's space. And also add Keldon Johnson for some more depth. Our next spin would see the GOAT involved. Michael Jordan heading northwest. A classic battle against Reggie Miller and the Pacers. I did think this was going to be an awesome, epic all-time matchup. I mean, Reggie, MJ, so much history. But no, no, no Reggie kind of went out sad. I mean, he played horrible horrible 12 points that's it meanwhile mike was 34 8 and 8 yep he's a problem reggie could have done the rest of the world a huge favor look at all that space mj occupies now and to make things even worse mj gets to add the best supporting cast piece from reggie's pacers which is 89 demonis sabonis okay that's that's a little bit overpowered we spun for and landed on vince carter next sending him southwest right into dominique wilkins big territory and dominique obviously benefiting from already having boosted his supporting cast vince didn't really stand a chance dominique's territory continues to expand as his supporting cast continues to get better, Carl Anthony Towns. We'd get another second timer as we spun and landed on Dirk, sending him due north right into the territory of Gilbert Arenas. The Mavs are down four, but if they get a score stop, a couple... So wait a minute, where, where's Dirk? Oh my word, Dirk fouled out. What? Can Dallas do it without Dirk on the court? Who's in the corner? Colin Sexton, he just stepped out of bounds. What? Oh, that's a contested shot, Spencer. Yeah, Dallas wasn't serious without Dirk. That's a tough break, but what can you do? Gilbert earned it. He played great. And that's, uh, that's a pretty big coup in terms of land space for Gilbert, taking over for Dirk. The train kept rolling with Carmelo Anthony being sent by the Compass Southeast right into the territory of one Kevin Garnett. I was hoping this would be a great battle, KG Melo. Uh, it really wasn't. A double-digit victory for KG, who got carried, by the way, only 17 points. KG acquires some more coastal real estate and also adds Jaron Jackson Jr. My word, that is a front line. There's a lot of legends we have not seen. I mean, they're all legends on this wheel. John Stock, did I, do we really care about John Stock? Anyways, Johnny Stock will be heading uh, which way southeast? Okay, we'll call that southeast 
released into Glenn Rice's territory, a battle of two guys trying to avoid MJ. And this one was somewhat close, but seven points. Uh, that's the victory for John in Utah. John's going to get some supporting cats. Oh my, 30 and 24. Uh, okay, he means business. All them assists led John Stockton to acquiring more Peninsula real estate. And also Paul George as a wingman. He might be well equipped to take on MJ. But putting that MJ side plot on the back burner, we'd again land on Gilbert Arena, sending him due south right into Pau Gasol's territory. And when I jumped in with two minutes remaining, I thought the Wizards had this game for sure. A five point lead, but instantly De'Aaron Fox, Pau Gasol, lots of chemistry on the pick and roll. De'Aaron to the rim, gets him within one. And finally, with 10 seconds left, De'Aaron, a contested push, jump hook. I don't know what that was, but it gave Pau's Grizzlies a one point lead with five seconds remaining. Oh my gosh, what are they doing? That's a horrible shot. Be oh! He made it. No, that was that was one of those ugly relief. That was not a green. What? I can't bet he made that. Gilbert absolutely got bailed in a way I don't think I've ever seen making one of these videos, but he's got a lot of real estate now. He's also building a squad of hitters as Zach Levine joins a core that's, uh, yeah, looking pretty nice. We followed up that Gilbert game with an absolute doozy. Hakeem Olajuwon on the wheel going northeast right into the face of Larry Bird. What should have been an absolutely epic battle started off with a bit of a blowout feel. Larry up early big. And alas, Hakeem never really brought it close again. The Celtics did win by almost 20 points. We always want to see Hakeem be great, but unfortunately not today. It's Larry's time. As I saw the wheel land next on John Stockton, I thought for sure he'd be facing MJ, but Southwest is technically Kevin Durant. He avoids MJ. I don't know why I'm giving John Stockton the benefit of the doubt, but I digress. By the way, it was probably a bit confusing with the color coding, but Kevin Durant is representing the Thunder in this video. Nice. And represent them. KD did not do a very good job. I mean, it does represent his tenure there. You know, they lost, came up short. Uh, John Stockton was amazing. Once again, 29 and 18. And Stock once again expands his territory around Gilbert and MJ. We'd once again stay on the right side of the map, Tracy McGrady heading southeast right into Kevin Garnett. I thought KG was building a little something, something but that's an uh, what, what, 11 point win for T-Mac. Good stuff, Orlando. And that is a coup for T-Mac as the right side of our map continues to shake out interestingly. But Wheel, can you please send us maybe to the other side of the map that we... Okay, well, yes, but we've already seen Dominique. Whatever, man. Let's see which direction Dominique is attacking from. He's won what? One, two games uh, northwest. Oh, and that's a battle of two players we've already seen multiple times. Dominique versus IT. Both these dudes were building something, but uh, Dominique, I guess, a little more serious right now. That's a 27-point win. And that is now a whole lot of territory for Mr. Dominique. Well done. And Brad, his team is looking serious. That's trouble. At long last, we'd finally get old Big Head himself, Charles Barkley. We'd send him northwest. And that's right into the territory of... Just an awesome battle. I'm so glad we're getting 95 overall prime MVP. P. Chuck. He's got a really good supporting cast on the other side. 99 LeBron. Less of a strong supporting cast because he's the better individual. But it was LeBron's supporting cast that was helping him out to a big 15 point lead in the first half. Wow. And unfortunately, Chuck and the Suns never recovered. I wish we saw a run from him or Reggie just not meant to. And Chuck only had 10 points. I don't feel bad for him at all. Come on. That's a joke job. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Chuck. LeBron's inevitable. Like, what do you want me to say? The wheel wanted us to simply live or die by John Stockton in this video. We're sending him Northwest. And yes, finally Finally, we've got Stockton versus MJ. Place your bets now. Does MJ still have his number? Oh my word. I can't even, I can't even wait till the fourth quarter to jump in this game. Does MJ still have his number? I would think so. That's almost a 30 point lead in the first half. Yo, John Stockton was cooking too. He added Paul George. Then that is a 30 point lead. Okay. Yeah. Safe to say that uh, John and the Jazz never came back in this one. What in the world? Jalen Duren is an 80 overall leading the team. Okay. Dread it, fear it, run from it. It don't matter. MJ's coming to destroy all your dreams. Oh, and he casually adds Paul George alongside Demonis Sabonis and him being a 90. What, what in the world? And the wheel was simply on one today. We get Gilbert Arenas again. We're sending him south. Come on, bro. I wish I had more uh, epicness to report, but this game was not, not close. Gilbert and the Wizards got trounced. Michael Jordan is inevitable. Yeah, it's more real estate for MJ. What else is new? At long last, the wheel would show us Kobe Bryant and the compass would send him northwest, which I took to mean Larry Bird's on the horizon. It doesn't get better than Lakers and Celtics. And for LA fans, well, this was nice. Kobe and the boys were out to a 20-point lead. And once again, I wanted more dramatics, but we didn't get them. Larry and the Celtics went out kind of sad. Oh, would you look at that? Kobe's uh, kind of Italian brother, Paulo Bancaro, leading the way in scoring. And just like that, Kobe finally checks into this video. Better late than never, of course. With the number of legends starting to dwindle, we'd finally get Patrick Ewing for the first time. We'd end up sending him.
him southeast. Which was simply right into the teeth of Dominique Wilkins. Good luck, Pat. Oh, no way, Dominique. What's happening, bro? No chance Pat Ewing in this base Knicks team. I mean, they do have LaMelo and uh, Pat. Oh, that's a dagger, Pat. What if Patrick Ewing makes a run here? I don't know. For some reason, that would be really funny in my mind. Oh, he's cooking him. He is cooking him. And a truly surprising, just the incredible move. Patrick Ewing takes over all that land from Dominique. Wow. Our next spin would land us on another player we've been waiting forever to see. Bob McAdoo of the Clippers. The compass would send him northwest. He's just been chilling over there on the coast. Now he has to play T-Mac. And because he'd become a bit of an afterthought, I did not see this result coming. A double digit win for Bob and the Clippers. And Bob was amazing. 43 and 13. Let's go. Man, I'm actually super hyped to see Bob McAdoo thriving in this video. Let's go. Next up, we'd land on LeBron James. Once again, the compass would say northwest. And the only country somewhat north of LeBron is D-Wade finally appearing in this video too. Another just perfect matchup on paper. We had to see LeBron back on the Cavs versus old buddy D-Wade on the Heat. Oh, nah. Oh, nah. Are they still going to be buddies? LeBron, how you feeling? Your boy D-Wade just beat you by 15. And you absolutely hate to see it. LeBron, 13 assists, but kind of went out sad. Only 22 points on 5 of 14 shooting. D-Wade was awesome. Yeah, he deserved that win. And I guess after all that, LeBron really isn't inevitable. Look at D-Wade with all that space now. We finally got another left side of the map. First timer, Clyde Drexler. We're sending him southeast where he's going to have to take on another left side first timer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Right, I really forgot Kareem was actually in this challenge. It's just been forever. And our two first timers gave us a legendary matchup. Clyde's Blazers were up three with two minutes left, but a very clutch Dario Sarge triple and the team's trading a few baskets inside left us with the potential for a great finish. Oh, five seconds remaining. Kareem, you got to make a move right here. You got... Oh, wait, why am I worried? That was... That was so... He, he just bullied Vooch. Oh, my word. And unsurprisingly, the Blazers couldn't find a good shot. Pascal Brick. Kareem grabs the very southwest coast. Nice. Somehow, there's still a couple first-timers on this wheel, or maybe only one. It, we don't get him, though. Patrick Ewing. And which way is Big Pack gonna go? Will he face Kareem? That is an option. No, northeast. And by that, I obviously meant northwest. And we do get a first-timer. Tim Duncan, let's go. A 1999 finals rematch saw a clutch finish in coming the Spurs up three. And they were doing it with Tim Duncan having played, like, barely at all six fouls. The pressure was all on Pat Ewing and the Knicks in the clutch to close this out with no Tim Duncan on the other side. Pat did get up with an and one. And the Knicks were bailed out with a chance at a game winner. Plumlee just was a little late on the dunk. But no point in even showing OT because the Knicks got flooded again without Tim Duncan. Patrick Ewing didn't deserve... Oh my gosh, him and Lamelo played amazing. How did they lose? Tim Duncan's will to win and leadership was so strong that even from the bench, he led his team to victory and took over all the map. Not literally, but that's a huge chunk he just acquired. And the wheel would run it right back with Tim Duncan and the compass sent him south. Technically no country south of Timmy D at this point, so we'll match him up with Kareem. After getting bailed last game, fouled out Tim Duncan. Uh, I guess he's playing pretty well in this one. The Bucks are not out of this at all. A minute and a half left. They need a quick bucket. Wait, why is Russell Westbrook pulling up? Okay, now it's must stop territory. I can't believe they let Russ shoot that. Uh, Lamelo, that's contest. Oh, he made that? Dude, that kind of animation never goes in in this game. Okay, San Antonio. Last chance, Milwaukee. You got to get something going very quickly here. Kareem, you better demand that ball. No way. No, Russ. Russ, why? Oh, okay. Tim Duncan, Um, he, he deserved this one. 36, 39, and 60. Wow. Literally nobody could have predicted this, but Tim Duncan now owns the entire left side of the map. Well, other than Austin. And somehow Big O and Allen Iverson continue to not have to play games. It's Bob McAdoo heading mostly west right into a battle with Kobe Bryant, the Battle of LA. And the Battle of LA wasn't quite a battle. Not an epic one either. Kobe was all over the Clippers, flexing on them. And yeah, Bob McAdoo, unfortunately, his Cinderella run is over a 24-point loss. Kobe again outscored by Bancaro and Kuzma. And just like that, Kobe Bean Bryant owns the northeast portion of our map entirely. Again, Big O and Allen Iverson avoided the wheel. And when Dwayne Wade was told to go east slightly north that took him in my opinion into the territory of Michael Jordan I know MJ's way down there but he owns all this real estate brother bro this would be an absolute coup if D Wade could beat MJ upset him despite Mike having a great team I don't think an upset's gonna happen unless the heat gets some stops and scores come on man one stop D Wade in the heat one stop and you go oh, Paul George that's not a stop okay you at least got to get a score back D Wade in the post that's not good that's not Good, D-Way, you should know. That's too bad. I'm not rooting against MJ, but like we love upsets. Oh my word. Paul George, 29 point. Michael Jordan, third in the team in score. Michael Jordan carried. Am I right, people? Yeah, it really might be Jover for the rest of our map as Mike takes, well, just all the middle of the map. And the reason I'm so bullish on MJ is because look at his supporting roster. He's beating all the right teams, picking up all the best pieces, man. Of course, the wheel would not land on Allen Iverson or Big O. Why would it? Tim Duncan heading north, slightly east 
And I'm saying he's going on to force Oscar Robertson to play a game. Let's do it. And our debut of Oscar Robertson was something to see. A 20-point lead in the first half. Where's that magic, Tim Duncan? Where's it at? It was never to be seen in this game, folks. I'm, I'm sorry, Spurs. That's like a 40-point loss, if my math is correct. And Oscar was a 40-point tripped up. Now just four players left. Oscar Robertson, one of them. Sure, why not? That, what is Allen Iverson still doing over there, man? If we don't end up with Allen Iverson playing a game here, I'm going to be apoplectic. There we go. Wait, I don't think it matters which direction. I think he plays MJ no matter what here. Wes, let's go AI. Let's see why we've all been waiting for you. I'll be honest, my expectations for AI in this game were super low. MJ's team is loaded, but Iverson had the Sixers out to a lead. That probably wouldn't last forever though with Michael Jordan on the other side, flying, soaring, doing everything for Chicago. But don't look now. Allen Iverson can close this game out up four minute and a half left. I've said it all video. In this situation, you just need some scores and some stops. One or two of each. AI blew past Jamal. Time for a stop now. That's a mismatch in the post. Oh, a double team. Uh, okay. Tough. Wait, where's Michael? Jo Michael Jordan's not on the court. I don't know. Is Chicago going to foul? I still can't believe they don't have MJ. Oh my. <laughs> what was that? They were trying to double or foul? Oh my word. Yeah. MJ and the Bulls were cooked. I don't know what they were doing in that game, but you know what? Full credit to AI. 42 points. He's in the video officially now. Truly shocking outcome in this video after AI takes over all that MJ real estate. We are down to three final players, Oscar Robertson, Allen Iverson, and of course, Kobe Bean Bryant. And the way it works when we have three teams or players left, one team gets an automatic buy to the finals. It's not going to be Allen Iverson. But whichever way Allen Iverson gets sent, uh, the other player will get to, oh boy, that is Southeast. And the player East of Allen Iverson is of course Kobe Bryant, meaning Oscar Robertson gets another break in this video. Whereas AI and Kobe are dueling like it's 2001 in the finals again. Let's go. Allen Iverson on one side, fresh off beating Michael Jordan just one game ago. Can he continue this crazy momentum? Kobe's only had to beat two opponents, but Larry Bird and Bob McAdoo were both formidable and both fell by the way side. Kobe's looking to clinch. AI was simply too much though for Kobe and the Lakers to handle in the early stages of this game. The 76ers were out to a big lead. As you'd expect with everything on the line, Kobe was fighting tooth and nail to keep his Lakers afloat in this game, but the Mamba mentality was not enough to overcome this freaking Allen Iverson like they are so good. How is he doing this? Exposing MJ and then Kobe. Unbelievable. Kobe was really good. 34, 2 and 6. He was 15 of 18 from the field. But AI was a super efficient. 25 points, 13 assists, 4 steals. Paul George continues to kill it in this video for whoever he's playing for. And with that, we're down to our final game. Allen Iverson on the right side of the map against Big O Oscar Robertson on the left side. I can't believe this is our matchup. Iverson is a 96 overall and he's accrued Paul George Anthony Edwards, Evan Mobley, Walker Kessler, Jeremy Grant, a pretty good supporting cast. While Oscar Robertson is slightly better in 97 overall, but his supporting cast of LaMelo Ball, Miles Turner, Scotty Barnes, Tobias Harris, Jaden Ivey, definitely a bit worse. But it's time to see which NBA legend is indeed the last one standing once and for all. Oscar Robertson and his Kings were off to a quick start. Nobody on the 76ers could contain Oscar and uh, they could hardly keep up with him either. Iverson and the Sixers though would make their push late in the third to keep the game close. Allen was balling in this game, but when push came to shove, big O Oscar Robertson was a physically dominant force head to head against his fellow legend in Iverson. And the Kings are in the driver's seat with two minutes left, but AI and the Sixers could still make this interesting. That space for LaMelo. Oh, great pass. LaMelo ball. Wow. He found Scott. Philly can't have too many empty possessions or like any empty possessions here. AI, you should have dished that. Paul George was open. Sacramento's letting LaMelo ball cook. Oh, that was a bad idea. Good steal. Walker Kessler. Paul George ahead of the break. Yo, this game is not over. I don't think the Sixers should force a three, but it would really help. AI, um, sure. Oh, <gasps> what a steal. Oh my word. <laughs> LaMelo just dribbled off Allen Ivers. I think they were trying to foul too. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and foul. I, I don't know if that's the right call. Just give us a three-pointer. Oh, that's space. That is space. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that looked good too. Man, I can't lie. I mean, good for Big O and the Kings. I'm devastated. Ant Edwards had a perfect look at a three that could have caused a lot more chaos, but no, not meant to be. The Kings do take it. Iverson in a losing effort, 42-7, six steals. He was hyper efficient. That's so tough. Oh my gosh, especially when Big O was not even good. 19, eight and eight, my man's got backpack. But however or not that final was supposed to go, whatever anybody predicted at the beginning of this video, I highly 
really doubt y'all thought big O Oscar Robertson would be the last legend standing. Life truly is crazy. At zero point in this video, did I think that was going to happen even into the final game? But hey, that's why we make these videos, man. We can't just judge things on paper. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below if you did.